what have you learned over the years for those leaders who want to keep their team members from burning out or what to do when they recognize team members are starting to burn out? You know, it's a great question. And so there's a few different signs. The first thing is to, you're going to start seeing a flat energy. So the energy is just not, they're not as engaged. They, they're there, but they're not really there. They're not coming up with a lot of great ideas. They're kind of like, they're just flat. I call it flat energy. So it's, you're, you're going to start seeing that. The other big thing is that they start might start making mistakes. This is a big piece to actually burn out is that they'll start making just really simple, but bad mistakes because they're, they're, they're decision making, they're just not sharp, right? They're kind of like not sharp. They'll probably in terms of like start being absent, they'll start kind of having some more sick days. They might start talking negatively around kind of like just, you know, different things that are actually happening in the office. And so it kind of comes out in different ways for different people, or maybe they just with, withdraw. Some people just kind of really like what you're saying, they kind of withdraw, they're, you're not seeing it with the social functions kind of anymore. And I think, you know, for everybody listening, if you're going to have like one takeaway from our, our call today, it would be like great managers who sit in that middle chair, they care deeply about their team. They really care for their team. This is not just like a job. This is like, it's like they're almost like a shepherd to their, to their sheep. They are, they, they take care of their, their team and they want their team to be balanced and they want their team to thrive and they want their team to be successful. And so when they see their team not setting boundaries and working too late and they see the price tag where they're exhausted or emotional or they're not handling feedback well or they're making mistakes, that's the time as a manager, you will get so much loyalty, especially from the younger generation. If you lean and say, you know, I'm just, I'm concerned. I'm actually concerned with what's happening. What's happening? Like in, in the last, there could be personal things. We had a an employee years ago, we've had an amazing success around managing, uh, hiring millennials and retaining millennials. And one of our employees years ago, she, she had a hard time setting boundaries. And I remember sitting her down and I said, you know, she's a like, Karen, it's so hard for me. I said, I know it's hard for you, but I am deeply concerned. I'm concerned for you. I don't want you to be emailing back at like past five. I like, I want to help you set the boundaries to care for yourself and your, in your, in your family. You know, because that's the thing about boundaries. When we say, if we say yes to everything, we are indirectly saying no to other things. We're saying no right. to our health, right? We're saying no to our family, our spouse, our performance. And, you know, for, for, for senior leadership teams when I'm coaching them, you know, if they're like, I don't know about this, like burnout, high performance, all you have to do is look at the science. And if you want a high performing team, you have to set boundaries because people are humans. They're not robots. So they need to protect that emotional energy in order for them to kind of perform. And so the great managers will really kind of lean in and, and help their team members really learn how to do it and model it. And, you know, it's hard, you know, everyone listening, like it's really hard to set boundaries, especially if we're maybe not good at it or we didn't see it modeled growing up. And then we have a manager that's not good at it. So all of a sudden we have this cultural, that basically this unspoken culture is like they talk about boundaries, but they don't really mean about boundaries. So to really set this up properly, managers, you have to show them how to do it, how to do it. And one of my favorite ways to do this, my favorite ways to, is when I work with senior leadership teams and I explain to the CEO and the senior, like, this is the science on high performance. If you want to perform at this high level, you have to set boundaries and here's how you do it. And when it comes from the top down and all of a sudden becomes this, this cultural shift within an organization, those are my favorite kind of clients. Because you can see it all of a sudden, spouses got to start getting the attention. Kids start thinking like, wow, dad, you're not so stressed out as before, right? They're starting to go to like the soccer game and they actually, and then because they feel so filled up, then they kind of have more burst of energy at the beginning. Um, and so it has this massive domino effect, but culturally it's so hard for so many of us. So it does, you know, the more that can be injected within cultures and companies, uh, the better. Mm -hmm. 